for the chromatography lab, we want to play a little bit with doing chromatography. We're not going to come to any great uh, uh, conclusions on this, but we should hopefully make some observations and share those in the report. So we're going to need some type of paper. Uh, this is my preferred paper right here, coffee filters, some nice and flat. And uh, this is one of the filters cut up. And I ended up getting four sheets out of one filter here. We use basket filters. They're not too flat, but we can cut them out a little bit along the way. Um, cut this up into square rectangles to use. We can use office paper. It's not the best. Office paper um, is not as absorbent of water as coffee filters. You might try um, um, shopping bags, paper bags from shopping also. So we want to cut up some rectangles that work for the size of glass that we decide to use. I want to put a um, oops, wrong thing. Use pencil mark on the bottom. That's a couple of X's that we can use. And um, we want pencil, not pen, because we know pencil will not be affected by any of the solvents. So if we use something that's affected by a solvent, it will interfere with what we're trying to do. So these um, pencil marks is to show us the starting point that we're going to use. So I'm just going to do a, a quick three here to show the um, setup. And some observations that we can do is uh, what solvents move faster and what solvents provide a greater separation, what inks or dyes have multiple components, which ones have single components. Uh, so we're doing this to get practice and to make observations. Chromatography is a way of separating components of the mixtures. So I'm going to do a um, food dye and a pen. So I've rigged this up already, so I can use uh, toothpicks to hold this in place. Other options, uh, bamboo skewers, um, paper clips, which you can unfold and make really long hangers also. Uh, so part of this is um, figuring out how to put together an experiment. So it's a simple experiment here, uh, chromatography but uh, be able to figure out how to put it together. So to spot my chromatography paper, if I'm using dye, I want to just put a drop on a plate. So I do a, do I have any green in here? It's one empty. The green's empty, okay. Uh, do a blue. This is a drop on a plate. And I guess I'll switch to red here. And a drop on a plate. So then I will use a toothpick to spot the um, ink. So I'll use a separate toothpick for each one so I'm cross mixing them. So I'll do um, red in the middle. And we don't want a big dot, but we want to make sure we have enough that we can see it when it moves a little bit. Okay. I'm not sure if that's visible, but okay, there's a dot there. That's big enough. So that's my red toothpick. Let me do all the reds. Let me do um, so I'm going to do three with the same mixture so I can 
make comments about uh, the different solvents on these same dyes. Okay, so that's a red. I'll do a blue also. So in chromatography, there's a mobile phase and a stationary phase. So the stationary phase in this case is paper. Mobile phase is water or some other solvent. And um, as the mobile phase moves along, different components will interact with the stationary phase to different degrees. And that'll cause some separation. So I'll use a a white board marker for my third spot here, another blue. So there's going to be different ability, different factors that uh, affect that separation, uh, polarity of the solvent, acid basicity, basicity of the solvent, um, ionic content of the solvent. Okay, so I have three chromatography papers, each with three dots on it. So I'm going to do a um, one in each jar. Get this um, set up here. Better. Okay. And when we put solvent in here, we want the solvent below that line with our dots, not above it. Now just dissolve them. We want it below it so as it moves up the paper, it will carry it with them. So I'm going to do uh, pure water, tap water, that is and um, two different concentrations of rubbing alcohol. I got 70% uh, um, our standard rubbing alcohol and 91%. So I want to add enough liquid so it's touching the paper, but not above the line. So this is gonna be water here. Okay. I see already moving, carrying the dyes with it. So some dyes are going to be single component dyes, and you want to see one color being moved. Now there's going to be multiple component dyes, and we'll see some separation occur. So these are going to be observations that we're making uh, from today's lab. And afterwards, we want to take uh, photographs of uh, some of our um, chromatography papers and uh, show how they separate. So that is 70% running alcohol. It's not moving as fast as the water was. And this next one will be 21% rubbing alcohol. 91% isopropyl alcohol. Okay, so water is moving real fast. That will be done real quick. So each one can take a good amount of time. Uh, in addition to uh, water rubbing alcohol, we can try other things around the uh, house. Um, ammonia hydroxide, uh, just don't read too much of it. Uh, we might have some other cleaning agents, uh, vinegar also. Um, so some of these components, uh, they will change their solubility or properties as they change from acid to base or vice versa. We do want to stop this before the water gets to the top. And when the water stops moving, we want to mark it with a pencil so we know how far the solvent got uh, before uh, it evaporates. Because as it evaporates, it might not leave any line as to where it was. So the water's moving real fast here. We're gonna be done with this. The water is moving the um, food dye uh, quite well. Um, I was hoping the blue would have two components. It looks like it only has one component. So I think it was the green that had two components. 
still supposed to be some in there. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just clogged and it's clogged. Okay, so the water did not move the dry erase, but the rubbing alcohol is moving the dry erase. So we'll take a quick look at this. So our food dye on the right uh, moved the farthest. Our food dye, the blue food dye moved the farthest. The red food dye moved the next farthest. And the um, dry erase did not move at all in water. Whereas in the rubbing alcohol, it's um, very similar, except that the dry race moves some. In this case, actually, the red and the blue food dyes are tied, uh, but then the um, uh, blue dry race is moving some, but the solvent front is way slower than it is with the water. So these are observations that we should include in our report. So this one's far enough, so I can let this one dry. And uh, before it dries, I need to mark where that liquid line is. Uh, the alcohol ones can still run a little farther. Um, so here's the 70% alcohol. And um, the um, dry erase is moving pretty good with that one. Um, the red is, is all the way to the top of the liquid. The dry erase is all the way to the top. The blue food dye is slightly behind. So um, we have some differences in how each one of these is behaving. And that's what we're looking for in this, just to be able to run experiment and make observations. We're not going to make any great conclusions from this, but we just want to do the practice of making observations from the experiment. Um, so that's it. Uh, we're going to write down our details. So all of my dyes today are single components. The um, lab, I believe, has three spots for dyes. So some dyes, like I think the green dye, will have at least two components in it. Uh, other dyes might have uh, two or three components in. Um, last year when I did this, I was getting um, uh, two components on most of my dyes. I must have been using my other set of dyes here. But um, so we might not get multiple components, but we might get multiple components. Uh, so we just fill in our reports, take a couple photographs of our. Uh, strips here and submit them. Now, again, we're not going to make any great grand conclusions, but we're just practicing on making observations from experimental setup. So I will leave this here and uh, we'll go through this tomorrow. I will say demonstrate tomorrow, but uh, we'll go through and answer any questions that you have and hopefully everything will flow well uh, tomorrow.